Hello, today we'll be going over the first video under AP Physics 2, which is Unit 2 Circuits. We'll be going over the general behavior of the parallel series and combination circuits with resistors and batteries. So to begin, let's go over the three elements of a circuit with only resistors, voltage, current, and resistance. Voltage, you can think of as kind of the fuel of the current. There has to be a voltage difference or a potential difference for electrons to move. So let's take this wire as an example. The villagers are the electrons and this wire has no potential difference. The villager amount is the same everywhere and so movement of electrons don't happen. However, now on this one, with a lot of villagers on one side, they see that empty side of the wire and decide there's a lot more space there and they move there because all electrons want to be spread out as far as possible. This creates movement within the battery and the wires. And that's how batteries operate. They have a consistent potential difference within them, which keeps the current running. And voltage is usually measured only by the batteries, and the unit for voltage are volts. Now onto the current. Current is the easiest thing to visualize, as it's just a charge that goes through a given point every second. And so the higher the current, the higher the amount of electrons going through. It's a lot faster. And the unit for current is amps. And now for resistance. Resistance is measured by the resistors on the circuits, and it does its job by either 1. using less conductive material, 2. making the material thinner, or 3. making the material longer. All of these will increase the resistance of a resistor. This gives us the equation R equals rho, which is kind of the, a Greek letter and looks like a P, and so R equals rho times L divided by A. The P, or like the rho, is the resistivity of the material. The higher the resistivity, the less conductive the material is. And so that increases resistance. If you increase L, or the length, that increases resistance as well. Or if you decrease A, basically A is the cross-sectional area, and if you decrease that, making the wire thinner, it will increase resistance. Now before we move on, I'll be using battery as this symbol, a resistor as this symbol, and anything in between as wires. Now to calculate resistance, there are two formulas. One if the resistors are in series, like this, or if they are in parallel, like this. For the series one, it's actually quite easy to find the resistance. Just add up all the resistances of the resistors, and that is the total, the total or equivalent resistance. However, for the parallel, you have a bit of a messier equation. It's just basically taking the reciprocal of everything and then adding them up and then flipping them at the end. Now the interesting thing is that the total resistance of resistors in series will always be higher than the individual resistance, like the highest individual resistance, which is pretty obvious. But with resistors in parallel, the total resistance will always be lower than the lowest one. Why is that? Well, the reasoning that I like to use is that since the electrons have more paths to go through, they can split up and then they will group up at the end, which allows for much more current. And so therefore the resistance is a lot lower when you have it in parallel. And the units for resistance is ohms. Now voltage and current have special properties within parallel and series circuits. In a parallel circuit, all resistors and batteries share the same voltage. If the voltage of one resistor is five, then you can assume that all the other parallel elements have a voltage of 5 volts as well. Now for current, current is added up. So if you know that the total current of the parallel circuit is 10 amps, then you know that each element will add up all the way to a value of 10 amps. The other way is true for series circuits now. The current is now the same while the voltage is added up. So knowing what the current of one resistor will tell the currents of all the others. So the equation that will tie all of these values together is called Ohm's Law, and you'll use it, be using a ton in unit 2. It comes in the form V equals I times R. V is the voltage, I is the current, and R is the resistance. Let's take this circuit for example. The battery has a voltage of 5 volts, while the resistors have resistances of 1 ohm and 4 ohms. So the question is, what is the current that the battery feels? 
Now the current that the battery feels is usually the total current. And so we can see that since all of these resistors are in series, we can just add up all the resistances, which becomes 1 plus 4 equals 5, and use Ohm's law, V equals IR, to get V divided by R equals I. And we know V is 5 and R is 5, so we get a final current or total current of 1 amp. So now let's try out a parallel circuit. Let's say that the voltage of the battery is 5 volts, and that the resistances of each resistor are 2 and 3 ohms. What is the current that's running through the battery? Well, we know that the total voltage is 5 volts, and we can figure out the resistance by adding 1 half plus 1 third, which equals 5 sixth, and then flipping the fractions, so we get 6 over 5. And that's our ohms of resistance. So we can apply V equals IR again, giving us 5 volts divided by 6 over 5 ohms, which is 25 over 6 amps of current running through the battery. So now what about this one? This one kind of is a bit confusing because it looks like both a parallel and series component are combined. And this is what's called a combination circuit. And it can be very difficult at first. So for now, let's look at this example which is a combination circuit with a 5 volt battery connected to 3 resistors like this. They have resistances of 2 ohms, 3 ohms, and 5 ohms. And the question is, what is the current of each resistor? So the first step that I always like to do is figure out what, which type of circuit is inside of which. In this case, it looks like the parallel is inside of the series circuit. The series circuit is the overarching one, and the parallel is inside of it. So for now, we can actually pretend like this parallel circuit is just one resistor, and now we've suddenly just got an easier series circuit. So what is the resistance of this new resistor? Well, through the parallel adding formula, we can get 1 half plus 1 third equals 5 6, which flipped to become 6 over 5, like last time. And so now we have a resistance of a resistor of 6 over 5 ohms, and we can utilize the series adding formula to sum up the resistances. Since the series ones, you just have to add them up simply, we just get 6 over 5 plus 5, which gives us a total resistance of 31 over 5 ohms. So then we can find the current of the whole system. By using Ohm's law V equals IR, we can turn that into V divided by R equals I, and that gives us 5 divided by 31 divided by 5, which equals 25 divided by 31 amps as the total current. Now, since that we're finding the current in each resistor, we actually already know one of the answers now. Current in all the resistors are the same in a series circuit, so that 5 ohm resistor from before, that current is 25 over 31 amps. Now let's look at the other two. We know that the total current of this small parallel circuit totals to 21 over 31 amps, same as the 5, resist 5 ohm one. So the next thing to try and figure out is how the current is distributed. So what's that one value that's shared between these two resistors? That's right, in a parallel circuit, it's the voltage. So by using Ohm's law to calculate the total voltage in this two resistor system, we can get 25 divided by 31 times 6 over 5 from that total resistance we used last time. We can figure out now that the total voltage in this system is 30 over 31 volts. Now since both resistors have this amount of voltage, all it takes is dividing the voltage by each, each resistor to get the current. So 30 divided by 31 divided by 2 and then divided by 3, which equals 15 divided by 31 amps for one of them and 10 divided by 31 for the other. Now if we add up these currents, we get, um, we get 25 divided by 31 amps again, which solidifies our answer. And so we know that's correct. So now, We've actually solved our first combination circuit. Now for the last example, let's look at a combination circuit in the other way. Instead of the parallel circuit being inside of the series, now the series is inside of the parallel. The three resistor values are going to be 5 ohms, 4 ohms, and 1 ohm in this kind of format, in this formation. The battery is a 5 volt battery, and the question asks what the current of the resistors are. So to begin, I would always recommend finding the equivalent resistance as your first step. Now since the series circuit is inside, we can just add 4 and 1 ohms normally and we get 5 ohms as that one resistor. 
And then now that we just have a simple parallel circuit, we can just do 1 over 5 plus 1 over 5, giving us 2 over 5, and we flip it to get 5 over 2 ohms as a resistance. Now we can find the total current using Ohm's law, giving us 5 divided by 5 over 2, which is 2 amps as the current in the battery. Now for the resistors, we know that the current is being added up, but the voltage is the same. So we know that the voltage in the 5 ohm battery will be 5 volts, the same as the battery, which then can let us calculate the current in the resistor. We do V equals IR, so V divided by R equals I, which is 5 divided by 5 equaling 1 amp. So since the total current of this system is 2 amps, by subtracting the 1 amp, we can figure out that the ser series system has a total current of 1 amp. And since series circuits all sh share the same current, we can assume that these two resistors also have 1 amp. So the final answer is 1 amp for each resistor, and we have solved our last question. Hopefully these helped. I'll be covering capacitors soon, and thank you so much for 300 subscribers. This channel is really, really reaching so many people, and that makes me so happy. It really does make me so happy that I'm helping so many people, and thank you for all the kind comments. So best of luck with your studies, and bye-bye.